founder ng Communist Party of the Philippines na si Joma Sison may banta sa pamalang Duterte. Kung sakaling mananalo ang BBM Sara ng unit team, magkaagulo mano at handa silang pumatay ng isang sundalo at isang pulis kada araw. Narito ang One News Report. If the Duterte regime succeeds in putting in power his chosen successors headed by Bongbong and Bo and Sara, there is the prospect of gigantic mass actions of the people rising up to prevent the usurpation of power as in 1986. But it is also possible this may not arise as quickly as in February 1986 because Duterte has already threatened to make a seamless transfer of power by declaring martial law in order to suppress the people and opposition forces through mass arrest, exemplary killings, censorship, confiscations, and other foul acts. In that case, the alternative for the people is to resist in ways similar to those of the people who have dedicated themselves to the armed revolution. And suddenly, the People's Democratic Revolution through protracted people's war will become stronger because of the grave political and economic crisis of the ruling system. As the dominant power in the Philippines, U.S. imperialism will have to weigh whether to believe that the Marcos Duterte tandem will be able to continue successfully the brutal campaign of anti-communist oppression or let the Robredo Pangilinan tandem take power and try to stabilize the situation as Cory Aquino did in 1986. I presume that the U.S. knows the prospective real winner in the 2022 elections from the usual opinion poll survey that the CIA secretly directs from month to month before election day in the Philippines. If an Aquino type of regime like that of Robredo Pangilinan will arise, we can expect the usual first six months to one year of the regime to be a period in which there will be public or third-party clamor for resuming the GRP and the FP peace negotiations and the contending parties will have to make their best possible responses to such clamor. I would expect Bayan to be among those progressive forces putting forward its own timely people's agenda to encourage substantive negotiations on social, economic and political reforms until U.S. imperialism, the big compradors and landlords, and the reactionary military officers pressure the high bureaucrat capitalists in place to slow down on the peace negotiations and speed up the campaign of military suppression.